Hello everyone, we're going to get started on our webinar presenting care transition programs to supercharged referrals in about 30 seconds. We've got some people on the line trying to get logged in. My name is Eric. I appreciate you guys spending some of your day with me. We're going to talk about a lot of uh, brand new and pretty progressive uh, sales and marketing techniques in the webinar today. I hope everybody is having a great holiday season and is getting ready to kick off 2012 in a new way, which is a good uh, opening theme for today's webinar. This is a brand new way of marketing your agency's abilities. It is more concise. It's the way that uh, we're being led by our payer source, Medicare. So I hope you guys get as much uh, out of the webinar as I got in creating it for you. And I think we're okay to get started. So again, my name is Eric Crump. I work here at the Adam Group. Uh, you can contact me at eric.crump at theatomgrp.com. And at the bottom of every screenshot today is our contact information, telephone number. But if you want to schedule a coaching call to go, because we're just going to scratch the surface with some of these uh, regulations and some of this opportunity, if you want to schedule a coaching call, you go to www.homecarecoachingcall.com. Uh, you can also look at past webinars from previous seasons at www.youtube.com forward slash tag webinars. And, of course, I'm tweeting now. I'm so proud of myself if I don't mess up. But if you need to talk to the tag team, it's at tag home care marketing abbreviated MKTG. And me personally is at Eric underline Crump. We are in Franklin, Tennessee. Uh, today is kind of dreary. Uh, it's just cloudy, overcast, light rain. It's about 48 degrees outside. So it's a good day to curl up with a good webinar. Uh, we always tell you if you're ever in the area, give us a call. We'll take you out to lunch. We'll give you a tour of the tag team facility. We actually have two facilities and a, a recreational uh, place that we'd love for you to come and spend the day with us if you're ever in Middle Tennessee. We should have a lot of questions and comments and follow-up from today's webinar. Uh, we did this webinar in the fall. It was the most well-attended and the most uh, researched and had the most comments and questions on it. So I encourage everybody today to submit your questions and comments in the question and answer box during your webinar. Uh, Try not to wait till the end of the presentation. Uh, we're always bombarded with things right at the end. But uh, all along the way, all your questions and comments will be addressed uh, by me personally. So today I'm going to talk about transition programs. It's a favorite topic of mine. And uh, it's been in the works for about uh, 14 months now. Uh, it started out when Medicare uh, defined and detailed accountable care organizations, uh, but now there's uh, uh, more transition programs that we can be involved in. So although Medicare focuses on home health skilled nursing and therapy and the application of formal community care transition programs, I always encourage private duty agencies and hospice agencies to become a part of these care transition programs. They'll be presented as a full transition program. In other words, uh, this will be from the point of an acute admission to the point of management and uh, chronic condition management in the home. So hospice will play a large role, and so will private duty services. I always tell private duty, you guys see the patient and have more personal contact with the patient than anyone. So if we are trying to lead a patient-centered focus, you guys are a very important role. And of course, with comorbidities, major comorbidities, two or three admissions, um, 
back into acute settings, there is a place for palliative care in these transition programs. We're going to focus today on Medicare as a payer source and as a provider of information on how we should be conducting these transition programs. It's no secret the U.S. healthcare systems become dependent on Medicare dollars for its profitability. Uh, other payer sources, private insurance, advantage care plans, there's just too much being lopped off before the actual care providers are being given their reimbursement. Therefore, we depend heavily on Medicare, and Medicare is changing. Uh, Medicare dollars are the engine that drives the acute and post-acute care dollars, and that represents a fifth of uh, our entire country's gross national product. So now, Medicare is sending us a message and has been uh, trying to get our attention for years. Now it's, they're using uh, money to get our attention, and now they have it. Right Now we're going to start changing our ways. Medicare is feeling the pressure to account for spending and eliminate waste. One of the signature ways expenditures will be lowered is the stoppage of payments going to inferior care providers. Secretary Sebelius is on record of estimating that 20% of all acute care setting hospitals uh, will be driven out of business in the next five years. Uh, the percentage is even larger with home health post-acute providers all across uh, the health care continuum. If you do not have the purposeful clinical outcomes to prove that you are adding to the mix, if all you're doing is collecting the checks, um, it is Medicare's purpose to put you out of business. A major financial emphasis will now be placed on penalizing poor quality care deliveries in all settings. So currently, Medicare spends the vast majority of the taxpayers' money without regard to glaring facts. And if you've kept up with uh, this Congress notes and what's being enacted, then you know that the uh, Super Committee was our last chance to come together and eliminate some of these drastic cuts that Medicare has targeted for the healthcare industry. It didn't happen. Therefore, a lot of these proposed penalties that everybody was on the books in the Patient Affordability Act but no one really accepted would ever come true are definitely going to come true. I don't see any way we can come together uh, politically. Uh, I mean, we can't even pass a budget. I think it's been 900 days since Congress has passed a working budget. We just keep kicking the can down the road. So you can count on these penalties happening. Uh, on any given day, one in 20 patients in American hospitals are affected by hospital-acquired infections. And among chronically ill adults, more than one in five report a serious error in their care. And that is layman's reporting, layman's term reporting back to the clinical settings. Uh, the estimation is that more than a third of these serious errors are actually occurring. Goes on, one of seven Medicare beneficiaries is harmed in the course of care and it costs uh, Medicare an additional $4.4 .4 billion each year. Of course, that's more through error that is spent than the proposed $4 billion in annual Medicare payment reductions for the entire healthcare sector. In other words, if we could eliminate mistakes and harm and do best practice, uh, there would be no need to cut Medicare as it stands right now. So the Department of Health and Human uh, Services has taken us in a new direction. Uh, they are taking a active role in the federal funded payment system. Projected funding is now to be allocated for preventative and quality initiative programs. And Adam and I go out and we speak in front of groups. Uh, it's always, we always get a, a big uh, surprise look on our attendees' faces when we bring up the fact that uh, there is no money leaving the healthcare system. All the penalties that are accrued and all the uh, reductions in reimbursement in healthcare is all being put over in a pot of money for preventative care services. You, as a home health agency or home health provider, 
it's up to you to go get that money. Be proactive about uh, reaching out and getting back the money that you're uh, entitled to for the quality of care you're providing. The saddest thing I see, guys, and when I go out across the country, is I see these great nurses uh, doing tremendous care for patients with comorbidities, major comorbidities, just all across all diagnosis. They're even, even their reported outcomes are great, and no one is marketing that. You have these super marketing firms with a lot uh, more egregious outcomes taking the lion's share of the business only because they're market savvy only because they know sales techniques. If you're a quality care provider, you're going to have to get more savvy in how you market your clinical outcomes and your nursing staff. That's what it's all about. Despite reporting changes and threats of reductions, no major change in the rates of harm and preventable readmissions have been seen over the past decade. All the things like care plan oversight, uh, the new face-to-face, uh, documentation regulations, the cutbacks for outlier payments, all those little things Medicare tried to do to get our attention and tweak the system have failed because we continue to do things the way we have for the last decade and the money's just not there to support it anymore. So proposed government payments to Medicare Advantage plans run by private insurers are scheduled to be reduced also by $132 billion over the next 10 years. If you thought Medicare Advantage plans were aggressively marketing before these cutbacks, uh, sit back and watch now. Uh, if you can't make a dime off these Ad Advantage Care Program uh, patients, these private insurance patients that the hospital keeps calling around trying to find a provider for, if you can't position yourself as being able to take these advantage care programs, you're going to be in trouble because the roles are continuing to increase. And I, I don't know whether you know it or not, but as of about three weeks ago, there is no limitation of sign-up for advantage care programs who have a five-star rating. Uh, that should scare some of you guys out there. Uh, no longer can we hide behind the fact that the majority of the year uh, we're not going to lose these direct Medicare payers to Advantage Care plan programs. There's going to be some behemoth Advantage plans starting up and growing in 2012. If you want evidence of it, uh, go to your local Walmart and look at the Humana partnerships. And if you don't have a local Walmart, uh, you're one in uh, 1,100 people have never been to a Walmart in the United States. It's crazy how much exposure these Advantage Care programs are going to have. New regulations mean certain hospital payments will be cut $22 billion by 2019. This is in addition to reductions of another $20 billion in Medicaid disproportionate share hospitals, the rural hospitals or the special needs hospitals. So. It, it sounds like a long way off, and it sounds like we could fix this, but uh, this is what that super committee uh, group was all about, and they failed. These things are set in motion. So I want to bring out one specific thing for you for a major referral source that you'll be calling on during 2012, and uh, I want you to imagine what they're going to want to hear from you. I want you to imagine whether or not they're going to want to hear about your clinical outcomes and your outcome-based quality initiatives that you can call on them with, or whether or not they want you to continue buying treats and blowing up their discharge planners. Hospital value-based purchasing was established by uh, the Affordable Care Act of 2011, passed over the summer. It's going to transition hospitals from pay for reporting to pay for performance, just like we went through PPS about nine years ago under Medicare system. Hospitals are scared to death. If you can't get past gatekeepers at hospitals, you can't get past uh, discharge uh, medical social workers or, or discharge clerks at the hospital, start bringing up value-based purchasing and how you can help them in that problem area. That'll get you meetings. I'll get you presentations, trust me. Medicare payment incentives and penalties to promote 
uh, two things, achievement of high quality and improvement in the care that we're giving our patients. Adjustments in Medicare IPPS payments started uh, will start on October 1st of uh, this coming year. That's when that first reduction in readmission payment for certain DRGs will happen. So that starts in physical year 2013, which starts October 1st, 2012, next year. And it'll be all based on quality performance. And program details left the CMS, but they've already published a lot of them. So let's look. This is value-based purchasing as it stands today. So simply put, if you're looking at this screen, you'll see that uh, right now hospitals are reimbursed on 12 measure counts in, in per DRG, disease-related group, with a 70% of their reimbursement coming from pretty much a static uh, amount of money coming by DRG and whether they have comorbidities and major comorbidities. The other 30% as it stands today are from their uh, patient quality satisfaction scores, their HCAPs, right? That's why hospitals have always been uh, consumed with their HCAP scores and, and driving those up because this is the major payer source of the hospitals. All the hospitals you guys call on every day, this is the payment model back from Medicare. Starting October 1st of 2013, look how that's going to change. The process of care, that static amount of money that they've always depended on, is one in five of the reimbursement dollars. The other half of their reimbursement is now split into outcomes and efficiency ratings. And outcomes have a lot to do with these readmitted patients back into acute care setting. And to be honest, hospitals uh, can't do much about it. I can show you data where the largest paying hospital per DRG for patients has the same readmission rates as the lowest cost per patient per DRG. It's not the hospital and what they're doing in the acute setting. It's who they're selecting to take the post-acute care. Right? They're leaving it, they were leaving it to these personal relationships with discharge planners and, and whoever was bringing the best cookies or, or muffins or whatever. But now it's all going to be based on your clinical outcome scores and how well you can represent an outcome based quality initiative. HCAP patient satisfaction surveys are going to stay at 30%. And then the efficiency rating that uh, is just one measure count and Secretary Sevilla says that the efficiency rating is going to be the clinician to patient ratio, and it's going to be a pretty strict one because Medicare is no longer going to fund the hospitals to uh, buy new land or memberships to the country club or all these retreats and all this. They, they're going to have to hire more doctors and nurses for the patients, the patient to nurse or clinician to nurse, uh, clinician to patient ratio has got to be in line. So that's how it's going to be broken up. Only 20% for process of care. The HCAP stays at 30. Now there's a new reporting mechanism for mortality and uh, quality of care while they're in the hospital ratings and then these readmission ratings and then the efficiency. So if I was the hospital, I would understand that, boy, my whole operations model has to change. Uh, no longer can I consider the episode over when the acute patient leaves my hospital. My true episode is not over until that patient I discharge is through their first primary home health episode. So entering quality initial, uh, initiative programs, Secretary Sevillas and Department of Health and Human Services has launched new nationwide public and private partnership initiatives tackling all forms of harm to patients. And one of the big ones is uh, nosocomial infections or hospital-acquired infections. The byline for these initiatives are called Partnership for Patients, Better Care, Lower Cost. And there's two defined goals, and here they are. A major provision in the Healthcare Reform Act enforces a new level of transparency of information. This was all born from uh, the Citizens Coalition for Nursing Home Reform. You'll be surprised how not only hospitals, but also nursing homes are affected 
by these new changes in Medicare reimbursement. We'll talk about each. The disclosure provision will make it easier for plaintiffs to collect damages for harm inflicted to their loved ones. They've opened up. They, they've removed the scab off of all these problems in, in nursing home care and in hospital care. So now, a special section under the Patient Affordability Act, Section 6101, will make it easier for lawyers to pierce the corporate veil and follow the trail of responsibility, thereby getting past the facility and all their roadblocks. Once this law goes into effect, we'll see a surge in nursing home-related lawsuits around the country. Trust me, the lawyers know the Patient Affordability Act better than the care providers. It's a shame, but this is the truth. That's why you're beginning to see an influx in every market of uh, litigation attorneys asking about pressure ulcers. Is your loved one in a nursing home? That type of appeal. In early 2012, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, or CMS, will begin to display new quality measures for nursing homes. These new quality measures will replace the quality measures that are currently appearing. They'll no longer have the five-star overall rating or even measured by stars. They'll be measured on percentages like home health, and some of them are in dire straits. So their overall ratings now will be health inspections, nursing home staffing, quality measures, fire safety inspections. Here's the two new ones, penalties and denials of payments against the nursing home and complaints and incidents incidences of poor patient quality care or endangering a patient. So uh, we go here, and you can go today on Medicare.gov and look up all this information and, and trust me, uh, look at the bottom, get on a coaching call, I'll tell you uh, a quick way, a method of how to put all your skilled nursing facilities and long-term care centers uh, how to rate them as to how much potential they have for business. However, they're scared to death, guys. They're scared to death because uh, if I were a litigating attorney and I needed business, all I'd have to do is go to complaints and incidences and look at those reports and see where certain facilities have a history of certain items. One of the main ones is pressure ulcers. I would, I would just target uh, certain facilities and then reach out to the family members who have residents in those facilities. It's not rocket science. And some of these facilities, I, I'm telling you, when you look and when you start profiling your own local market, your own territory, you'll see why some of these facilities uh, are really in big trouble, right? Uh, this is an actual uh, report. Uh, that I pulled a couple of months ago, and I use it in some of our uh, teaching and some of our classes. But the black box is covering an actual nursing home in the Chicago market with these reporting of short-term stay residents, and they had over 200. And look at the very bottom line. The percentage of short-term residents who have pressure sores, 57% for this one nursing home in the Chicago market. Not only are they not going to make a dime from Medicare, and every one of, of these 57% of their total population is now an at-loss patient, they're subjected to criminal and litigation uh, penalties. So, and again, uh, the same nursing home percentage of short-term residents who have moderate to severe pain 65%. So if you were playing the market, uh, there's little chance knowing what you know just off going to Medicare.gov and Nursing Home Compare and spending 30 seconds. Uh, you would have to sell all your stock in this black box uh, residential care home because uh, it's probably not going to make it through physical year 2012, to be quite honest. And there's a lot of patients going to be displaced. One goal of Secretary uh, Sebelius' new initiative is to reduce harm caused to patients in hospitals. By the end of 2013, preventable hospital-acquired conditions 
would be decreased by 40% compared to 2010. If we were to achieve this goal, it would mean that 1.8 million fewer injuries to patients and more than 60,000 lives saved over the next three years. If we can reduce the harm to patients while they're in the hospital by 40%, that's the effect. Here's where we come in as care providers. Here's where we need to put together our proposals and reach out to the hospitals because here's what we can do for them. Improved care transitions. By the end of 2013, preventable complications during the transition from one care setting to another would be decreased so that hospital readmissions would be reduced by 20% compared to 2010. And 20% uh, is not much. If you Right now, we have a 24.8 uh, readmission rate for CHF in the country. If we can bring that down to 20% and still put one in five, that's a 20% drop. So if we were going down to 20% even for CHF patients, this would mean 1.6 million will recover from illness without suffering preventable complications and re-hospitalization. It would save hospitals in your local market, millions. Across the country, over $1.3 trillion in cost savings to Medicare. So it's not rocket science why they want us to work on it. It's estimated that achieving the first two stated goals would save tens of thousands of lives and also potentially save Medicare up to $35 billion over the next three years. So over the entire 10-year period of, of the program with the $1.3 trillion. Here's where we come in. CMS is now accepting applications to participate in community care transition programs. And the great news is they've opened up new dates. $500 million has been set aside for community-based organizations to participate in care transition programs. And on the screen is the link where you can get all the demonstration details on how to create a care transition program and submit it to CMS for approval. And this uh, information is off the website as of last week when the final changes were made. So here's the additional panel dates. In the first run, uh, obviously Medicare didn't get as many uh, quality proposals as they would have liked. The first run was cut off on October uh, 28th for submissions, but now they've just released new application deadline dates, and here they are. Uh, they go all the way up through March 27th. Your deadline for submission would be March 6th. So to the left, December the 20th is a new review date, but their applications must be received by November 29th. The next one you could be part of is your application received by uh, Medicare on December the 22nd. You would be up for review on January 12th. So this is how it works. They're putting it out there to get more and more care providers into uh, organized community-based transition programs. The community-based transition program goals are to reduce hospital readmissions test sustainable funding streams for care transition services, maintain and improve quality of care, and document measurable savings to the Medicare program. The demonstration will be conducted under the authority of Section 3026 of the Patient Affordability Act. So as of today, uh, there have been approved seven community-based transition programs, seven markets out of over 500 healthcare markets across the country have been approved for community-based transition programs. Uh, one in Phoenix, one in a uh, Atlanta, in Akron, Ohio, uh, Merrimack Valley, which is northern uh, Massachusetts and southern New Hampshire, southern Maine, and one with the Council for Jewish Elderly in Chicago, and an additional one in southwest Ohio community care. And that's all, all they have to this point. There are others 
are still in the pipeline under review. However, they're in desperate need of you guys on this webinar today to pick up the ball, submit your care transition programs, and that's what this webinar is today is about, is us helping you get it done. So it's not going to blow over. Uh, if you're waiting on the payment structures to return back to normal, trust me, there's a new normal in town, and it's all based on your clinical outcomes. That's how Secondary Civilians is going to drive a good percentage of our low-performing agencies out of business. We need to get out of our old habits and the way we approach referral source and start adding tremendous value. Start having talking points that really uh, start inside their bubble and transition over into our bubble. Because no longer can we go and just call on them with superlative language like we love your patients or, or we're the, the caring provider. Uh, those superlatives won't cut the mustard. It'll be all about your outcomes, your specialty programs. Uh, what intent do you have that you can deliver to the hospital and the nursing home that will help with their posted problems? That's how you'll get the business. Otherwise, you're going to be left behind, and your revenue is going to suffer. So here's what we can do. Hospital readmissions is one important indicator of possible flaws in one type of transition. 20% of all Medicare hospital patients are readmitted within 30 days of discharge. Costs billions and billions of dollars on an annual basis. And that's called uh, overall uh, DRGs, overall diagnosis. You can separate them out, like we talked about uh, earlier, uh, CHF national average 24.8 which sadly, when they announced the ACOs, it was 24.7. We actually have gotten worse since these initiatives were first put into action. However, the good news is there's some great care pro programs out there that have uh, repeatable and uh, reportable results that will make a difference. Certain other specific diagnosed patients have even higher readmission rates. CHS have a national readmission rate of 27 or 24.8. So that's updated. It went up a tenth of a percent. So here's how we would approach with a well thought out solution. We would wrap our uh, service, we would wrap our specialty program and uh, our intent to deliver an outcome based quality initiative around our outcomes. Or you need to wrap it around a known uh, transition program that's already working under already enacted and you can get those off medicare.gov it's not rocket science so we would lead with our clinical outcome scores there's 22 of them for home health and we would approach hospitals that we know have problems in certain areas because we can go on medicare.gov and look at their outcomes right so that's how we would lead so under this um, Medicare has now opened up how they're paying the hospitals, which has never been done before. But this, uh, it used to be calendar year 2008. Now they've updated it. This is uh, calendar year 2010. This is how much each local hospital were uh, reimbursed for different DRGs. This is all CHF with first one comorbidity, second one major comorbidity. And the third is CHF with no comorbidity. Uh, this is how much Medicare is paying back uh, the average or median payment uh, back to the hospital for these number of patients, and it, it outlines the patients. If you were uh, going to start a program, you would always want to start in the pond that had the most fish in it, where the patients are. Calculate the readmission rates. You can calculate the amount of money you plan on saving the hospital. Wouldn't that make a great presentation? for you to go to Rush University Medical Center in Chicago and say, I can take those 153 major comorbidity patients. Here's my care transition program. I'm going to cut that number in half for you. And because of that, your savings is going to be X. Medicare savings is going to be Y. But here's how we're going to get it done. So you draw such a distinct picture on why you deserve their discharge acute patient that they would never dream of giving one of your, their patients to your competitor. It just wouldn't happen. 
And everyone who uh, says, well, transition care programs won't work uh, because everything uh, hinges on patient choice, right? We'll go to a hospital that has its own home health agency and see how much everything hinges on patient's choice. There's several reasons why acute discharge patients are discharged. One of them is if you can save them money or if you can literally give the patient the option of going the path of least resistance and where they're going now with a readmission rate of 27.8%, knowing that the second readmission of CHF, the life expectancy, is down to five years now, and the third is less than two, give them that option or give them the option of or go into this care transition program model where our readmission rate is currently 6% because there's programs out there reporting numbers six and lower. And leave it up to the patient to decide. So here's where we take another step. We take it beyond the hospitals, and we go out to the skilled nursing facilities. And a lot of times I go out to um, home health agencies, and we're looking at their local market, and it's kind of like um, these skilled nursing facilities are seen as competitors at the point of the hospital discharge, so they're kind of put off. Uh, to the side as a non-factor or whatever. Realize this, guys. They get paid that 100-day episode. So you can take their uh, amount of certified beds, and you can get that on Medicare.gov. All you got to do is divide that by three. That's how many patients on average are discharging to somewhere every month. And odds are these are coming uh, to home with skilled needs. If you don't think that you can get buckets of patients at skilled nursing facilities, you've just uh, got your head in the sand because you can. In fact, you can make create transition programs that work with skilled nursing facilities to start taking over these high-risk patient populations or these low-profit patient populations or these uh, initial episode is complete patients that are automatically dropping off. Because it's not hard to, you know, it's not like they can research someone like we do for another episode, uh, there has to be an acute exacerbation. There has to be an acute setting stay for two days before they qualify to go back into the nursing home. It's not as easy as you think. There's a lot of patients dropping off with nursing homes. And what we need to do is reach out to these nursing homes with benefit and say, we can help you in these areas. We want to be your care uh, provider. Uh, transition care provider and help you with the pressure ulcers. Here's another talking point I always go over. It, it's not uh, magic, the fact that Medicare makes us report four out of five of our wound care outcomes have to do with pressure ulcers. You know, a brick doesn't have to fall out of the sky for you to realize that Medicare is wanting you to concentrate on pressure ulcers because it's a large, large problem. It's a large uh, money problem for Medicare, and it all stems from hospital and skilled nursing and long-term care settings. We are asked to be a care provider for these high-risk patients. That's why we report our pressure ulcers scores. So uh, it's kind of Medicare's taking us kicking and screaming to the woodshed. So, you know, I would catch on before you actually got to spanking and realize this is what we need to be doing. We need to develop these pressure ulcer programs to help the skilled nursing facilities and local hospitals because they're getting beat up over it. So these are three outcomes for pressure ulcers, three out of the five. And you can match these up with the nursing home. Again, this is a, an actual nursing home that has 57% short-term stay residents who have pressure ulcers. Uh, if I could go out as a home health uh, marketer and tell them uh, our team, our home health team, uh, includes treatments to prevent pressure ulcers 98% of the time, which is above the state and national average. Our home health team uh, took doctor-ordered action to prevent these pressure ulcers 
99% of the time, which is above the state and national average. And in your best interest, you should allow us to help you with this problem, patient population. Because in all honesty, if we don't, they're going to be put out of business because of the litigation factor, of the penalty and reimbursement factor, and all of it stems from skilled nursing facilities uh, not being thinking outside the box and not knowing about outcome-based quality initiatives, not thinking the way we are forced to think about our patient population. You know, their whole profitability is uh, butts in the bed model. Uh, quality of care is, is relatively foreign to them. Uh, not that it's not on the tip of their tongue and not, it's not their intent, but to correct a problem is very hard for them uh, to penetrate because they've never had to do corrective action on quality of care. So we approach them and say, here's the better mousetrap. Here's what we'll do to help you cut these short-term stay pressure ulcer numbers in half. And again, uh, this is a care transition program not funded by Medicare. The prevention and readmissions are, but you can easily do it. So that's what we do here at TAG. We take on clients and we get them started with transition sales series. There's six specific classes written with six specific topics that reach out into the skilled nursing facilities and the hospitals and attack problem areas. It is a, a trans, uh, transition program that has value to your referral sources. They'll need you to do it. So under pressure ulcer prevention and care continuum, that's one class or presentation, and they come as PowerPoints. You would give your presentation on how you had the better mousetrap to reduce their clinical outcome for short-term stay pressure ulcer residents by 50%. Same thing through increasing cardiac outcomes through patient self-care initiatives. This is a hospital presentation where you're going to the hospital to uh, the powers of the discharge unit and saying, here's how we can help uh, reduce your readmissions back with this acute uh, diagnosis by 50%. Here's our better mousetrap. Here's two more, increasing diabetic patient outcomes and reducing readmissions to acute care. Get ahead of the bubble, here's the next two up. Here's the next two in the, in the, in the batter circle. We all know about uh, post-heart attack, CHF, and pneumonia, the ones that's been up there for two years now. But they released the payment information on diabetic patients, COPD, and post-surgical wound patients, right? No. It's no rocket science what the penalty, where the penalties are going to come from next, what diagnosis they've already selected. You can be proactive and already reach out to these hospitals because a lot of these readmitted patients, uh, the elephant in the room is uh, they're not profitable for these hospitals anyway. Because of the uh, median reimbursement from Medicare, they can't make ends meet. It costs $13,000 to take care of a readmitted CHF patient. The average uh, reimbursement for Medicare is around uh, 6800 Everyone that comes in there, they're losing $7,000 on. So that alone, uh, before you tackle on the fact that you know that the reimbursements are going down and that the penalties are going up, just in their profitability model, they'll, you'll get their attention through these diagnoses and programs. And here's two more written for skilled nursing facilities and long-term care. So I've already got some questions about private pay providers. This is your end. You want to be a preferred provider? Uh, keep uh, thinking about uh, putting in cookie ovens or doing yard sale, parking lot yard sales and calling bingo every other day. See how well that gets you when someone else shows up with a dementia and abuse training for their staff, which is a requirement under Medicare now, and offers to teach them eight classes, one a month for eight months, and, talk, and walk them through an outcome-based quality initiative. 
your bingo won't hold water. So here's how it works uh, for our presentations. Now our presentations are about 80 to 90 percent complete for you, but when you get them, you'll have to run them through your clinical staff to make sure that this is how you're going to do, these are the modifications you're going to make to your current uh, clinical pathways. Once that's completed, uh, these things have powerful results. I can't tell you enough about the CHF, uh, the pneumonia, the COPD, the diabetes, all these programs, when they're presented to hospitals, you automatically, even if you can't drive them to the point of creating a formal community care transition program through Medicare, which I bet they are interested in that because their penalties will be reduced drastically if they're a member of a community-based transition program. But even if you do not take them to that level, just showing them this presentation, letting them look and see that this is the kind of care that your patients get when you are assuming the care off the 485, then that elevates your whole marketing and sales pitch and your whole agency to another level in their eyes. I see it all the time. Even when we're working on getting the community care transition programs, after the presentation, these patients come to these agencies that are already using these presentation pieces because we've already elevated the talking points to the point where they want their patients cared for by our agency that we're servicing. So you can get any one that you want for $497. Um, the deal is you can get all of them for $1997. And know this, they're all specific to you. They'll all be transformed with your logo, contact information. Uh, they're open templates, but we'll send them out designed uh, with the coloring and logo of your agency. You'll own the six strategies. No other competitor in your service area will be sold, this or any of the following that are written. In other words, you have first right of refusal. If someone else approaches us, and it happens all the time, uh, we have 19 markets out there. There's 73 markets still available. Uh, honestly, I don't know what all 19 are sold. Uh, you would have to call in and talk to a member of the tag team to find out if you're able to buy these uh, transition programs from us. Even if you're not, even if you're locked out, and a lot of you will be, uh, you can still get on coaching calls. We can still uh, work together and come up uh, with the basics of what you intend to provide. There's a lot of opportunity out there. However, if you call in to one 232 6477 and talk to Reba or Cindy or Brian and you are able to get these transition programs, uh, you won't regret it. So these are samples, screenshots of how it'll work. You'll be able to target specific nursing homes, specific hospitals uh, with their numbers off Medicare, match them up with your numbers off Medicare, and put your presentation and your ideas to work. So uh, it goes into, and in, in your presentation, it takes them on, for the pressure officer one that's loaded, it takes them on how these numbers are calculated by Medicare. A lot of nursing homes don't even realize they're doing it to themselves on their uh, five-day uh, PPS uh, admission screening versus the 14-day PPS admission screening. If a pressure ulcer is identified any time in between there, then, the, then that facility owns it until it's cured. These how, this is how powerful these things are. So. We take them everything from how it's done to assessment tool to the fact of you're going to relieve one of the problem areas. And in the end, and uh, I've done these presentations out in the field. We represent uh, some home health agencies where I personally do these presentations and I go out there and I've done these to administrators of SNFs. And trust me, when you start wanting to get the attention of an administrator, and you bring up the money that you're going to save uh, them, you're 
you have their undivided attention, uh, especially on pressure ulcers, dementia and abuse training, fall prevention, some of the areas that are costing them a lot of money. Your promise is that you're going to take them through an outcome-based quality initiative with these, and in the end, you're just going to look at the administrator and say, look, here's why it's not profitable for you to hang on to a patient who scores uh, less than 12 on a pressure ulcer assessment score. And here's why these patients are no longer profitable when, they're re, uh, when your reimbursement uh, goes from 100% to 80% and there's no copay provider. The patient, their family is unwilling or unable to pay it. Medicaid's not picking in anymore. So you draw the model on pressure ulcers of the um, rating scores, 12 or less. There's no liability in the home care. We can take these patients. Uh, here's our cure rates on pressure ulcers. They're better off for you, and you will be getting rid of a problem area that if you hold on to, not only will these patients never be profitable for you, but you stand to put your whole facility at risk with penalties and litigation. That's how powerful these presentations are. So I always say I'm not here to show you uh, these presentations. I'm here to teach you, right? I'm here to teach you how to fish, not just to feed you. So we'll walk through these referral source presentations and make sure that you're prepared to make the benefit sell to your prospective community-based transition partners. And they can be, remember, hospice, private duty, skilled nursing, a council on aging, SNFs, specialists, clinics, hospitals come together, uh, the first seven that were uh, approved under the formal community care transition programs are on the website. Just model your presentation piece on what they've already got up there. They've got summary sheets on all seven of the ones that's already been approved. There's even a section on there of best practices and what will get you approved through CMS. Uh, and it's just simple stuff. Like you have to open the patient up within 24 hours of notification. You have to do timely uh, patient teach and interaction with the families. Self-management is very important and comprehensive medication and treatment training. But it's not rocket science. In fact, it's what we do already. It's just that we don't do a really good job representing ourselves as doing it. And you can add any of the components out of the TAG catalog. Uh, some of you guys were given an email today, but I'll go ahead and announce it. Anything from now until the end of the year that you find if you're in possession of a TAG uh, web store catalog, or if you can go to www.tagwebstore.com, anything you see, 25% off. It's a great time to stock up on some of these patient teaching tools, brochures, zone flyers, disease flyers, log books, other things. If you want some one-on-one, -on -one, you want to bring your whole team in, and let's put this uh, transition program together, soup to nuts, uh, buy out a boot camp. It's a day and a half. We'll have this thing cranked out and ready to hit the market with. Uh, we don't have our boot camp scheduled for 2012 yet, but well, we're committed to doing at least one boot camp uh, every calendar month of next year. Uh, so contact us at 1-866-232-6477. It's very cost effective to bring your whole team in and spend uh, a couple of days with us here at TAG. You'll be bombarded uh, with information and tools to get you started. Here's the great announcement. I was saving to the end. I even colored it in green and red because this is, uh, Adam just told me this yesterday. Uh, that he wanted me to offer anybody on the Care Transition Program webinar a free, I'm sorry, a full year's membership into our support site, myhomecaresalescoach.com, for $399. So it's usually $97 a month. Uh, the cheapest we ever sell it is people who are here at boot camp can get it for $497. Uh, it's never been this cheap. Uh, and this is uh, in-house pricing. 
uh, it won't be repeated. It'll last until you forget about it because we're not going to advertise it anymore. However, you can go on, and what this will uh, provide you is a lot of templates that you can use to create some of these specialty programs. And even if you don't like the design, you can copy and paste the, the information and turn it into whatever you want to. That's what we do for uh, individual home care agencies. This also entitles you to a coaching call once a month. Now, you're probably going to want to speed that up because of these transition uh, deadline dates. If you're serious about going through a, a community transition program, uh, we can help you. But even if you just want your sales team to take up a notch, their talking points for 2012, this is a tremendous opportunity right here. Now, you've got to call in and talk to uh, Rebecca, Cindy, or Brian. This is the in-house. You can't go to the website and sign up at this price. You'll have to call in to one 232 6477 This is the only time it will be announced, but uh, now through uh, the end of the year, it will be $3.99 for a full year's membership for 2012. So, I got some questions up here I'm going to answer. There's a lot of stuff I didn't get to cover. I know I, I went a little long today. Here's my contact information. I'm going to leave it up uh, for a while. I'm going to answer a few sales calls or, uh, and then uh, answer some questions uh, about the webinar today. And we always give you guys the follow-ups. Uh, uh, we'll contain all the slide information. It'll be emailed to you, Nick Pastano. It'll be coming from Nick and the tag team. You'll probably get it within two days. Uh, got a question? Do uh, we can handle all the consultation over the telephone? Uh, uh, we do it all the time on speakerphone, which is part of your uh, team that puts together your care transition program. Uh, we lead you in certain best practice areas. However, we modify uh, our suggestions on what you want your transition program to say. We can do it over the telephone. Of course, you can get a lot of benefit by coming here on site and bringing your clinical team here. Uh, we can hold up to 10 people. It's the same price for six as it is for 10. Uh, call in. Uh, to Reba at 1-866-232-6477. She'll make it happen for you. There's a lot of requests for the slides, and you guys are going to get the slides uh, and any information, uh, other information that we can uh, provide you. All you got to do is call in. We're here. Uh, that's what we do. We have some clients that are tearing the market up, quite, quite honestly with going to referral sources and talking about how they can help them with problem areas uh, that they have right now. Because uh, home health, uh, we know we're getting hit a little bit in reimbursement, but uh, hospitals, SNFs, clinics, doctor's offices, they're all scared to death. All you got to do is look inside uh, their profit model and come up with some benefits as to how you can help them save time, money, or take better care of their patients. And you'll get their business. It, it's that simple. They're ready for a more informed, more thought-provoking uh, conversation to happen about their discharged patient population. They're no longer leaving it to the back of the hospital to decide what home health agency gets certain patients. And you'll see that. You'll see it blatantly in 2012, I guarantee. And I got a lot of comments uh, about thanking us for doing what we do, and we love we love it. Uh, this is the last webinar of this series. This, this will end the winter ser uh, series. Uh, spring series will start probably mid-March. However, we're always here for you. Uh, we've got some great uh, ideas, great products, great ways to reach out to the market uh, to differentiate yourself from the people that are just uh, still stuck in the mud. And I want you guys to all be healthy because a healthy home health uh, market is a healthy tag uh, as well. 
So happy holidays. Thank you for spending your time with me today. I'm always here for you. Uh, and if we don't speak again, Happy New Year, and let's make uh, 2012 a year to remember in the Home Health Agency uh, market. Thanks, guys, and have a great day.